are the maintenance issues a result of neglect or are they a result of maybe construction on the front end? That's the best way to answer that. It's like my knees, right? They right. were good once. <laughs> are they bad now? Why are they bad? Because I'm old. Structural engineer Alan Kilsheimer has been building and assessing structures for more than 50 years. He has an impressive resume. He was called in to help when American Airlines Flight 77 struck the Pentagon on September 11th. We got the phone call the day the plane hit. I was there at noon or 1 o'clock. And was there for a year, so nothing will ever come close to that. And now he's investigating the pedestrian bridge collapse at Florida International University. That killed six people in March. He knows a problem when he sees it. Not everything is running calculations. Um, I do a lot of stuff by how it feels right here. And putting it bluntly, some of our bridges need dramatic overhauls. See where the beam is here? See above it? That's the curb. Yeah. See how there's a big chunk taken out of it? Yeah. Well, that piece of concrete fell off. Kilsheimer, photojournalist Rebecca Nyer and I spent two days checking out three bridges labeled structurally deficient by the Federal Highway Administration. Basically, one or more key elements is in poor or worse condition. By our count, there are 67 structurally deficient bridges in the metro. We chose one bridge from Maryland, one in D.C., and another in Virginia. These bridges are the most traveled, structurally deficient bridges in town. Bridge 1, the Beltway over Central Avenue in Prince George's County, Maryland. Bridge 2, I-95 over Route 7 in Stafford County in Virginia, and then the Anacostia Freeway over the Suitland Parkway in the district. First up, Maryland. We travel to the Beltway over Central Avenue. These bridges are the worst in the state. And when you get up close... Something needs to be done with this. You can see why. Look right there. Okay. See that piece of steel below the this condo that's coming down? Yeah, right well, there. that's part of the beam. So that part of the beam has rusted through and is broken loose from the rest of the beam. See those, those are pieces of concrete. Not, not the dust stuff, but those solid pieces, mm -hmm. they probably fell off of there. What does your gut tell you about this bridge? It says that I wouldn't mind driving underneath it on top of it, but I have grandchildren that are like eight to 10 years old. I don't think I'd want them driving on top of them when they are old enough to drive. These bridges get a lot of traffic. Built in 1963, they're crossed more than 203,000 times a day. Let that sink in. We addressed our concerns with Maryland State Highway Administration. They acknowledged the issues and said their bridges have outlived their, quote, useful and reliable service, which means we're all driving on borrowed time. The good news is that they're in the process of being replaced. The bad news is that it will take three years to complete. Up next, D.C. The bridges that make up the Anacostia Freeway over the Suitland Parkway were built in 1964. It's crossed nearly 82,000 times a day. You're basing everything on what you can see, and it's what you can't see that's usually the bigger problem. Let's start with the bad news. Some of the major problems with the bridge include corrosion, missing anchor bolts, and section loss to some of its girders. But if you look at this, you have the concrete girders sitting on these round columns, right? right? right. And you see that in this one right here, there's a bunch of hairline spider cracking. Mm -hmm. And so that means that there's moisture that's gotten in there and it cracks. And over a long period of time, it can uh, expand and it can cause rusting to the reinforcement system. That could be a problem. The good news is that it's being addressed. The District Department of Transportation said that they perform preventative maintenance with the installation of supplemental supports. Construction workers are now in the process of replacing the bridge as part of the city's South Capitol Street project, which will be completed in 2021. We ended our inspection in Virginia, checking out the bridges that make up I-95 over Route 17 in Stafford County. You see the cracking of the deck. That's from water penetration, right? And then the water rusts the steel. VDOT says the bridges are regularly damaged by overheight trucks hitting the girders, and they've had to make emergency repairs to both bridge decks. But you can see somebody's already marked where they're going to do some repairs. See the white marks? This hasn't been marked. I have a feeling it was so obvious they realized they were going to do it. The bridge needs work, but does he think that it will collapse anytime soon? No. Where does this one rank? Is this probably the better, the best of the three? It's the best of the three. Virginia's Department of Transportation tells us it's being replaced. Engineers are prepping the site for construction and work should be complete four years from now. Three bridges, three different parts of town. Kilsheimer says all of them, even with their structural deficiency label, are safe, at least for now.
Transportation officials tell me they regularly check the integrity of the bridges that you just saw. And as we wait for the bridges to be replaced, I guarantee to stay on it, keeping government officials accountable to the timelines and advocating to keep us all safe while out on the roads. Larry Miller, WUSA 9.